Hey you guys, this is .NET Developer here. I'm going to teach you how to use Entity Framework in Visual Basic. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create a Windows Form application. We're going to call this, let's see, what topic do we want to do? Um, hmm. Let's make a, uh, let's make a basic library catalog. So, let's call this library catalog. We're going to build the project here. So, it's creating it right now. I prefer Visual Basic. I may do a C Sharp tutorial in the future. Just depends on what, what all I have going on. But anyway, let's start off by adding a new folder. We're going to call this folder Entities. Now these entities are going to be the objects that we're going to store in our database. That we're going to make with... Um, <coughs> sorry. We're going to make with Entity Framework. So let's start off by making... Uh, a book. So we're going to create our book object and private class book. And let's make a public property book ID as integer. This will make our entity framework has it to where if they see the name of the class with ID at the end that it'll make it the primary key, it'll make it the identity which means it's going to auto increment up one for each book you create or each item you create so what are we going to have for our book? we're going to have a public property title as string which string automatically sets it to an invarchar max as the data type for the for the field public property description as string. So it's a basic book. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to work along to work along with this creating more classes. Let's make a genre class. So we're going to go public property genre as not genre genre ID as integer again our primary key public property name as not name as string so this is going to be the name that we're gonna assign to our genre and since we have the books there, we may want in the future, if we want to create reports with Entity Framework, we may want to add a list containing all of the books by genre. So we're going to create public. I want to do oh, I want to do a uh, lazy loading, which doesn't load all of the materials, all of the classes at once whenever you call for this it'll load it whenever you need it so whenever you specifically ask for the books associated with the genre then it'll load it right then and there it won't automatically load it every time you load a genre so we're going to go public overridable property books as list of book so now that we have that, we also have our book. Since a book can have multiple genres, you know, horror, mystery, thriller, just like a movie, we're going to want to do the same thing here. So we're going to do public over, gosh, I'm terrible, property genres as list of genre. Now that we have both of that, let's hmm, try to think of how we can do this.
Now let's just add it here. We can make public, since this is a simple project just to start out, public property public or er, author as string. So just a very simple two table, you know, just a very simple two table database. It's a simple first project. Who knows, we could add more in the future just if we want to make a more complex project. Now we're going to go to project and manage new get packages. We're going to add entity framework. So once it installs, which it should install quickly, I've been working with Entity Framework today. I've already installed on another project I did, so it shouldn't take too long. I'm also on a pretty decent internet connection here. So, okay, so it's finished. So we're going to go up to References and add a reference to system.data.entity. It's automatically built into the .NET Framework, Microsoft is specifically de designed in the framework to make working with data a lot easier. So now we're going to go to our entities folder and add a new class. We're going to call this uh, library context. You may be asking yourself what is a context and how are we going to use it? Well a context is simply think of it as a structure for your database. First you're going to want to import system.data.entity and we're going to want to make this inherit db context. Now since we imported that system.data.entity we won't need it to call our uh, DB sets. The DB sets are like the tables in your database. So what we want to do is go public property books as as a DB set of book and public property genres as db set of genre why did I press enter so now we have that all set up you're going to want to go to tools and uh, man NuGet package manager and go to the console I have it down here and you're going to go enable hyphen migrations hyphen enable automatic migrations now my, what migrations are they're kind of like log files for your database think of them as backups they keep information of what your database was like before each change so it's a really good way to see if somebody messed with your code and mess the data set up or the database up completely you can go back to a certain migration that you have set now we're going to go add hyphen migration initial I always call it initial you can call it anything you like it's just showing this is the first migration we're adding to our database it's just taking the uh, it's just taking the basically how your context is right now saving it in the migration file as you can see it creates a table books and has all the fields saved in that file so you can revert back to it now you're going to go to update database if I, it would help if I spelled it right so now that you update your beta database if nothing goes wrong with my SQL server which it likes to it should say running seed all this text running seed method which seed method is, is in your configuration it allows you to put 
initial data in there, running seed method. Like it says here in the description, a new customer with full name, Andrew Peters. That's just it's just showing you how you can add or update values in your database. Now let's go to the said we're gonna make this very simple. Um let's go to our main form. And I'm planning to pick this all back up next video which this is just showing you the basic structure next video we're going to go into more in-depth topics so we're going to open our tool toolbox let's put a button right there just to see if it's working I'm just going to add a genre Again, you can set, test this out yourself with anything you want. I'm just giving a really, really rudimentary example here. A really rough sketch of what you can do. So let's add a list box. So what we're going to want to do, let's just click on the button. Since we're going to need the button click event anyway. Let's go to form events on the form load. And first, we're going to want to import system data entity. So now let's make a public property context as context, or I forgot I said library context. Now, with our form load, we're going to more or less say context equal to a new library context and we're going to want to load context dot genres dot load so this is going to load all of the genres since we're only going to be using the genres table for this example here we are just going to load the genres so now what do we want to do when they click that button we set on there first of all let's go dim g as new genre g dot name equals text box one dot text now we're going to want to go to context dot genres dot add we're going to add it G to the genres. We're going to go context uh, genres or context dot save changes to save changes to our database. Now, whenever we want to, now what we're going to do here is whenever the form loads, we're going to have it load all of the genres into our sorry into the list box so we're gonna go context uh, no we're gonna go sorry we're gonna go for each G as genre in context dot genres dot local dot to binding list which that local dot to binding list it's just basic it's literally just a list but it binds all of its information in that list to the database so you're taking literally pulling it straight from the database and keeping it kind of like a binding source you would think of but this requires no binding source you could still have it to connect your context database which we will probably be I'll show you whenever we do reports in a little in a few videos possibly so we are going to list list box one dot items dot add g so that's going to add it to context so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to clean the text box out text box one dot text equals just the empty string it's going to set the text to nothing and we're going to want to set clear the list box so it can repopulate it with the new values. 
each time you click the button. So it just doesn't keep stacking on it. So we're going to go list box dot items. This box one dot items dot clear. Now we're going to call the form load. Form one underscore load. I'm going to call it with nothing, no parameters. And this should be up and working. So my computer's slow, again I apologize. So let's test this out. Just make it random okay, so it's system dynamic proxies dot genre. And a bunch of random why is it doing that? Oh yeah, we forgot one thing. If we go to our code for our genres because whenever we put the genre into the list box, it's just putting the straight up object. But we need to edit the two string, which we don't have to add another migration to add the two string, because it's like you're calling the class directly, because you are, because it's not bound to a database. You have that freedom of code first programming. So we're just going to go public overrides two string, and as you can see, it's my base dot two string two string. We're going to go just return the name in the genre. Let's do the same for our book just to, for simplicity's sake. Public overrides to string return tide return the title. Let's just return the title. Now <coughs> we well, of course we're gonna change all this so as you can see, it has the name as a two string. So we can just type uh, horror, and it adds horror to the list. Well, I hope you guys like my video. I hope it cleared a lot up with my with learning in the framework. Um, if you like the video, then don't forget to hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and like, favorite, subscribe this channel for more programming tutorials. I apologize for my speaker. My speaker is terrible. I'm planning on getting a new mic soon. And I also have a stuffy nose, which is why my voice might sound a little, you know, clogged up. But, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope some people are watching because I could use the views. I'm just trying to start out here, you know, just doing something I love. Well, thank you for watching, and goodbye.